Hey everyone, Steven here. I want to introduce you to the First Person Interaction Toolkit for O3DE. If you're asking uh, what O3DE is, well, O3DE is a open source real-time 3D game engine. Um, it used to be based on CryEngine and then it became Lumberyard and now it is O3DE. Um, and I, I tried this about a month ago and since then I uh, have worked on this little project to learn but also provide a nice template project for first-person exploration games, uh, walking sims for short. So uh, this project is based off of Porcupine Factory's uh, first-person controller gem, which is uh, quite amazing. It's a nice first-person controller, um, and there's a great tutorial here on YouTube to set it up. But uh, for right now, um, all you want to do if you want to uh, install my little t template project is uh, either find it on itch.io or on uh, GitHub. And you can just download the zip. And from here, you can go to open new, open existing projects and then find the first person project. Um, additionally, it'll have a gems folder, which will have the controller that I'll be using. But um, that's all you have to do is just add the, the folder. Um, you may need to uh, go to uh, build here and um, make sure uh, also to configure gems and make sure that the uh, first person controller gem um, from Porcupine Factory is enabled. Uh, aside from that, um, you know, feel free to open it. It might take a little while after building. And it'll look something like this. So, uh, <laughs> this project has a few scripts here, um, and I wanted to make them as simple as possible for newcomers to uh, sort of read, skim through, and understand um, the intricacies of how O3D works, but also um, to just, you know, make it as modular as possible. Um, and so, you know, basically all of these just have a single script attached to them, and they all communicate with each other. Um, so, all right. Let's uh, start the uh, game here. So one of the first things I worked on um, was uh, grabbing things. So as you can see, um, I'll put it back, but uh, whenever I hover over it, it says uh, it po pops up a message to grab the mug. Now this is contextual. You can set it in the inspector and uh, have it say grab pen, grab this, or uh, anything really. Um, so uh, grab a mug. Uh, another thing you'll notice is uh, you can actually rotate the mug um, and sort of just, you know, put it in whatever orientation you want by right-clicking hold and just moving the mouse and it'll sort of lock the viewport. Um, similar to Gone Home or other sort of uh, walking sim games. And uh, you can throw it and uh, it'll, <laughs> it'll go back to the original position if you throw it close enough to the original's position. Okay, so next um, is the uh, light switch. It's just a light switch. It toggles on and off. It's about all there is to it. <laughs> um, next is uh, a door. So obviously you can't go through it. But if you open it, great. You can go through it. Um, you can also close it and uh, sort of open and close it based off of uh, which side you're looking at. And um, the great part is um, you can. it's physics enabled. So if it locks, it locks. But they can also kind of push it out if it's not locked. Um, another mechanic here is uh, notes. So you can sort of uh, inspect notes and it'll sort of freeze the game. Um, and click back when you want to return. And uh, I have teleportation pads here. Pretty simple. Um, and it teleports without error. So if you drop an object in there or walk inside, it'll height correct based off of where the pad is. Um, or the, the destination, I should say. And uh, that's that's that. Um, over here is a trampoline. So if I jump on it, it's not gonna really, you know, have much velocity here. But um, let's say I uh, I throw something at it, like uh, a mug, for example. <laughs> it'll uh, it'll definitely bounce until it ceases to need to bounce. Um, but also, let's say I go up these uh, stairs. and get a good jump, it'll <laughs> have a lot more buoyancy. So that's the trampoline. 
uh, very simple. Um, and uh, one of my favorite additions is a ladder. Now, this ladder is uh, quite similar to something that you might expect in like Half-Life. Um, it goes up if you look up, it goes down if you look down. Uh, if you want to get off prematurely, you can just fit back. Um, and uh, that's, that's about it. Um, so the elevator, elevator in this game has, uh, again, Temple Light has, you know, buttons that you can call up the elevator, but let's just, uh, go down the slide. <laughs> um, and that's actually not even a script. That's just the Porcupine Factory's built-in controller that already handles slopes. So, um, okay. So the elevator, um, the nice thing about the elevator is it can also, uh, carry objects too, but we won't, not worry about that right now. Um, so let's just call the elevator up. So moving platforms and uh, yeah. So let's uh, call elevator down. Great. So um, the next thing uh, we can go on to is the valve uh, and sci-fi door system. So uh, a valve uh, is similar to Half-Life or Penumbria or any of the other games you might have seen a valve in. Um, you can hold left click to turn it left, hold right click to turn it right. Um, and so it kind of, when you're holding it, it sort of smoothly interacts with uh, whatever, you know, zero to one sort of <laughs> thing you, you can control, whether it be animation or uh, just moving it, values, rotating something. It's quite nice. Um, you can even use it for cars if you wanted to. So great. Um, I guess last test. Um, maybe uh, let's see. Show you show you the physics. Oh, <laughs> and uh, walking up stairs, walking downstairs. Um, if I wanted to throw this on the elevator lift and just call the lift up, it'll follow the ele elevator. Um, so that's about it. Um, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know how if you make anything with this. Um, again, this is my first project in L3DE, but uh, I hope it's helpful for someone. And uh, hopefully it gets more people using open source game engines. Thank you so much and have a great day.